Nick and Mark have asked me to welcome all of you, their friends and family, to this day of celebration of their marriage to one another. Let us rejoice in the bonding of these two as they begin their married life today. Let us remember this day as we begin the celebration of their marriage, the words of Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy from June 26th of this year. No union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than once they were. As some of the petitioners in these cases demonstrate, marriage embodies a love that may endure even past death. It would misunderstand these men and women to say they disrespect the idea of marriage. Their plea is that they do respect it, respect it so deeply that they seek to find its fulfillment for themselves. Their hope is not to be condemned to live in loneliness, excluded from one of civilization's oldest institutes. They ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law the Constitution grants them that right. Nick and Mark, happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In the art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say, I love you. It is at no time taking the other for granted. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is doing things for each other, not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. It is not expecting perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, <laughs> patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having a capacity to forgive and forget. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, the dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is not marrying the right partner. It is being the right partner. It is discovering that your love for one another is at its best, will never lose sight of or be blotted out by the commonplace experiences of life. And it is remembering that remaining devoted, confident, and hopeful in one another are the secret ingredients which will help you to remain two very happy people, richer for your oneness. Mark and Nick, before you are joined together in marriage in my presence and in the presence of these, your family and friends, we wish to acknowledge that you both come to this ceremony as complete individuals who, bearing free and unconstrained souls, understand the profoundness of this lifetime commitment. At this stage of the ceremony, I ask if there be anyone who knows of any reason as to why Mark and Nick should not be joined in marriage. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> and I rush right into the next part. Before you are joined in marriage, in my presence and the presence of these, your family and friends, I am to remind you of the serious and binding nature of the relationship you are now about to enter. Nick, Mark, marriage is a commitment to life to the best that you two can find and bring out in each other. It offers opportunities for sharing and growth that no other human relationship can equal, a joining that is promised for a lifetime. Within the circle of its love, marriage encompasses all of life's most important relationships. Mark and Nick, 
the two of you are each other's best friend, confidant, lover, teacher, listener, and critic. Marriage understands and forgives the mistakes life is unable to avoid. It encourages and nurtures new life, new experiences, and new ways of expressing love through the seasons of life. When two people, Nick and Mark, pledge to love and care for each other in marriage, they create a spirit unique to themselves, which binds them closer than any spoken or written words. Marriage is a promise, a potential, made in the hearts of two people who love, which takes a lifetime to fulfill. We who are witnessing your marriage hope that despite the stresses inevitable in any life, your love and respect for each other, your trust and understanding of each other, will increase your contentment and heighten your joy in living. At this uh, point in the service, uh, Mark and Nick would like to ask those of you who wish to do so to offer any recollections or reflections that you have for them. Um, ending each with a toast. So please open and use the champagne on your tables, pouring them into the glasses, and if anyone needs a glass, raise your hand, and I'm sure some of the ladies helping us will bring you one. Um, yeah. uh, let us honor Nick and Mark in these moments. We knew that we were in trouble when his tank was completely empty of gas, that he insisted on driving into New York City on empty because he thought it was cold. <laughs> 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 he had to sing, he had to sing. New York, a wonderful town. Yes, <laughs> and he said he knew the city so well, he had this fabulous hotel that the three of us were going to stay in, and he was so proud of it. And we went there, and it was on the, the room was on the third floor, and the room was about the size. No elevators. No elevators, and the room was about the size of that little woodshed over there. <laughs> and I'll never forget what was in the drain in the bathroom sink. What was it? <laughs> and, and I can't really tell you about the drive home because of the age of some of the people here, but um, in the magazines. But I think Christina Longobardi remembers that. I remember all that. I remember all that. <laughs> Suffice it to say, there was an interesting magazine in the car, and Dee had bought many theater scripts. And I said, do you read these all before you give them to your students? And he said, yes. And I had a pair of scissors. And so I cut some things out and I put them in the scripts. And apparently he does not read them all. <laughs> the other thing that made me love D is when he let Karen and me be fairies in A Midsummer Night's Dream. And we actually had speaking roles. It glittered. <laughs> to the good graces of the McCoys, and um, they were wonderful neighbors, and they would do any chore for me any time. And I miss that almost as much as I miss you. <laughs> 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 so I love both of you, and Mark has, has certainly helped you mature this time. And um, we love Mark. <laughs>
before you are joined in marriage, I am to remind you of the solemn and enduring nature of the relationship into which you are about to enter. Please join your hands now as you repeat your thoughts. Mark, my sweet, sweet man, in front of our friends and our families, I promise that I will say what I mean and mean what I say. That I will always be honest with you. That I will never hurt you on purpose. <laughs> of my life, I promise to be the best husband and partner that I am capable of being. Nick, my loving man, in front of our family and friends, I will always mean what I say, say what I mean, I will always be honest, I will never hurt you on purpose. Our wants will come before my wants, our needs will come before my needs. Nick and Mark have brought rings to present to one another as a symbol of their marriage today. Although there is no precise evidence to explain the origin of the tradition of exchanging rings, the more ancient and widely accepted explanation refers to the early Egyptians' belief that a circle was the symbol of eternity, a sign that life, happiness, and love have no beginning and no end. A wedding ring, or circle, was placed on the third finger of the left hand, the ring finger, because it was traditionally believed that this finger was a direct connection to the heart, the perfect spot to place a symbol representing eternal love and commitment. The vena amoris, that is the vein of love, runs directly from the ring finger to the heart. May these rings be a symbol of this affectionate union, two lives now joined in one unbroken circle. May these rings on their fingers symbolize the touch of the spirit of love in their hearts. This ring I be wed. Take it and wear it as a pledge of my love. Take it and wear it as a pledge of my love and as a symbol of all we shall share. And a symbol of all we shall share. Mark, in placing this ring on Nick's finger, repeat after me. Nick, with this ring I be wed. Nick, with this ring I be wed. Take it and wear it as a pledge of my love. Take it and wear it as a pledge of my love. And as a symbol of all we shall share. And a symbol of all that we shall share. Mark and Nick, you have declared before all of us that you will live together in marriage. You have made special promises to each other which have been symbolized by the joining of hands, the taking of vows, and the giving and receiving. By the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you married. Now that the ceremony is over and the experience of living day by day as married people is about to begin, go and meet it gladly. You may now seal your vows with a kiss.
and Mark, never forget the beginning of your love for one another. Take care of it, nurture it, and allow it to grow strong and firm in the years that are to come. Always concentrate on making each other feel happy and secure in your commitment to one another. Always rely on your ability to keep the promises you have made to one another today. And always, always love one another. Family and friends, may I present to you Dr. and Mr. Nick and Mark Taylor. Yeah.